Hey y'all, today I wanted to walk you through uh, 10 books in my collection that represent uh, more than 50 years of black romance history. We know that the first uh, black author to be able to write a happily ever after for her black characters was Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, who wrote in 1892 the book Iola Leroy. But the first book that we would recognize as a romance novel to include a happily ever after is Marilyn Morgan R.N. by Ruby Saunders, which was published in 1969 by Signet as part of its nurse line. Saunders would write four books for Signet All Told, all featuring Marilyn Morgan, and uh, that's where this book gets really interesting because all of the books in the series subvert sort of a typical romance trope of the time in that Marilyn is actually dating a different man in each of the four books, and she doesn't marry any of them. So this is a really interesting series, and it goes back to 1969. In 1980, we have Entwined Destinies by Rosalind Wells. In 1979, Vivian Stevens had become the executive editor of Candlelight, a Dell uh, romance company. And she invited her friend Elsie Washington to become the, the first person to write a black romance for Dell and for Dell Candlelight. So this candlelight romance that came out in 1980 um, under the name Rosalind Wells uh, is widely seen as the first sort of modern romance to feature a black character and written by a black woman. After the success of Candlelight, uh, Vivian Stevens moved on to create Candlelight Ecstasy, The Tender Mending by Leah Sanders which is a pen name of Angela Jackson and Sandra Jackson Opoku, is the only book in the Candlelight Ecstasy line um, in its entire history to be written by black women and to feature black characters. It also has a great cover image there. In 1984, Barbara Stevens, who is the sister of Vivian Stevens, writes A Toast to Love, which is the first black romance to be published in hardcover uh, by Doubleday as part of its Starlight Romance line. Other authors that would go on to be published this way are Sandra Kitt um, and Donna Hill, as well as Vivian Stevens, uh, who co-wrote a, a particular book with them. In 1992, Sandra Kitt writes Love Everlasting. This is for Odyssey Romance, which was a very small uh, niche romance house uh, out of S Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, Love Everlasting ends up being the last book that the house publishes, and Kit actually does the cover art for her own book in this case. In July of 1994, Beverly Jenkins' Night Song is published. This is the first historical romance to be written by a Black author and published by a major publishing house. Also in July of 1994, Kensington launches its arabesque uh, romance line. Sandra Kitt's uh, Serenade is one of the first books to be published. They would go on to publish another 12 books by the end of the year and continue on for more than a decade. Also in July of 1994, Looks Are Deceiving by Maggie Fer Ferguson is published by Harlequin. It's the first Harlequin intrigue to be written by a black woman and feature black characters. In 1996, Brenda Jackson writes Whispered Promises. This copy is interesting because it's actually, it was originally published in 1996 by Kensington Arabesque, and then it was later reissued by BET Arabesque, who would go on to publish uh, dozens of books, as well as convert many of those books into movies, and then sell the line on to Harlequin several years later. And finally, Katrina Jackson's Back in the Day represents a, a turn towards the indie publishing market that has become necessary for a lot of black romance authors in order to find their audiences and write the stories they really want to see. I've written a bunch about this. I'll leave a link for my black romance author's timeline, uh, which is on my website uh, down in the description. If you like this, please like and subscribe and let me know if you want to see more.